We slept late acclimating to the time change and checked out of a room and then we checked our bags at the hotel. We cut through the silo district, surrounded by cutting edge architecture. This time when we crossed the swing bridge, I remembered to walk on the left side, which is just like when you're driving here. It was still cloudy over Table Mountain when we snapped some pictures as we headed toward the wheel. The 45 mile an hour wind gusts rocking the cars were a bit too much for Julie, but the cape wheel was still open so Jenny and I couldn't resist hopping on for breathtaking views of Cape Town skyline. It's an absolute must do when you're in the area. After all that excitement, we found an inexpensive lunch nearby at the V&A waterfront. We opted for Wimpy's Burgers, a local favorite. After lunch, we grabbed our bags and called an Uber and headed to our next hotel on the far side of Table Mountain. Found in the heart of Constantia, Sellers Hohenort is a beautiful estate set in nine acres of manicured, award-winning gardens with a small vineyard and a forested area. After being shown to our rooms, we explored part of the gardens and found a wide range of beautifully manicured landscapes. Do you think that way? Or that way? Around yeah, this around, building? Around there. Okay. Right. Dinner at the Conservatory restaurant was delicious, and the local Constantia wine showed why it has such an amazing reputation. This wine was a favorite of Napoleon, and it's reported that he requested a glass on his deathbed. Eventually it was time to call it a night, and we headed back to our room to do a little bit of sink laundry and get some sleep. Tomorrow we take the bus with our Cooper Shock Tour group, and we cover a lot of ground. Today our first stop will be the top of Table Mountain. But first a little bit of coffee and breakfast before we head to the bus. Good morning. Hi, you driver? Yes I am. I'm Tom. Morning. Nice to meet you. You too. Good morning. Hello, hello. Oh yeah, see that way I don't have to hold it. Hi. I like the shoulder harness. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll all be famous on Instagram. I think that was how it went last time. Actually, it was. No, you're not too old. At the aerial cableway station, the girls saw Lion's Head where they summited two days before. There was a long line, but Chef Matt, our Cooper's Hawk host, figured out how to get us all in the fast pass line. Table Mountain Cableway ascends from an elevation of about 1,200 feet above sea level to near the mountain summit at approximately 3,500 feet above sea level. This means the 3,400 foot cable car ride provides an elevation gain of around 2,300 feet. 
consisting of layers of Table Mountain sandstone and Cape Granite formed by volcanic and glacial action 520 million years ago. Table Mountain is at least six times older than the Himalayas, making it one of the oldest mountains in the world. Enjoy some of the views from the top of Table Mountain. After hiking and even seeing some wildlife, it's time to head back down. Our next stop is the waterfront for lunch. But first, we pass through Bo Cop, the most colorful neighborhood in Cape Town. The houses were painted every color of the rainbow as a celebration of freedom and a nod to their history with slavery. In the 1970s, the residents decided to celebrate freedom with a splash of paint. The people here are all about the Cape Malay culture, which is a mix of Malaysian, Indonesian, and African. Many of the residents are descendants of slaves who were brought to the Cape by the Dutch East India Company. These slaves come from regions such as Java, Malaysia, and Indonesia, contributing to the cultural melting pot that defines Pokhop. We had a really great lunch back at the waterfront before we headed to our next destination. The Castle of Good Hope was built between 1666 and 1679 by the Dutch East India Company. The castle is the oldest colonial building in South Africa and has served various purposes throughout its history, including a military fort, administrative center, and a prison. You'll find the Castle of Good Hope on the Condé Nast and Viator Top 10 Most Haunted Locations in the World.
It's just a short drive from the castle to the Diamond Works HQ where we learn about diamond cutting and polishing. After learning more about Africa's storied history of diamonds, we head back to our hotel and explore some more of the grounds before we have a group dinner. All good days must come to an end, but we need to be rested because tomorrow is an even bigger day. We'll head down to the Cape of Good Hope and explore our first winery, among other exciting adventures. This morning we traveled to the Cape of Good Hope. We head south along the Cape's western coast, passing Hout Bay where we see Chapman's Peak. But first, we need a good breakfast. And then, there it was. So we also have Cape Cobra in the reserve, which is probably the most dangerous snake we have here. We don't see the Cape Cobra so often, they are very fast, they tend to move away when people come closer. We rode the Flying Dutchman funicular to get to the top, traveling almost 2,000 feet and rising almost 300 feet in about 3 minutes. Our destination is the old Cape Point Lighthouse, built in 1859. The last few hundred yards to the lighthouse provided outlandish views of the super blue South Atlantic water. Estimates suggest that hundreds to possibly over a thousand ships may have sunk in the waters around the Cape of Good Hope throughout history. We've got 15 minutes to get back to the bus and we could take the train down but it's only a mile and it's all downhill so we're gonna walk. We made it, no sweat. Alright, back on the bus and to the Cape of Good Hope sign. In addition to being the southwesternmost point of the African continent, it's the most popular Instagram site around. Next stop, Cape Point Winery, where we have our first official wine tasting and an amazing fresh from the ocean lunch.
into all of the magic happens yet. Um, so yeah, I've displayed our our four souvenir blocks that we that we do here on the farm. I will get you some more. <laughs> Coming back for you. Thank you. Pleasure. and we're headed to Boulders Beach on the east side of the Cape to see an African penguin colony. This is where we learned about city baboons. If you want to leave your windows open, you need bars on them or the baboons will come in and wreck your house looking for food. Penguins can be found throughout the southern hemisphere, including South America, Antarctica, Australia, and New Zealand. The African penguin is the only species of penguin that breeds in Africa. And they're found along the southwestern coast of Africa, particularly in South Africa and Namibia. Join us in the next episode when we visit South African wine country. We'll visit wineries, take a train, a tram, visit wine cellars, all as we learn about and get to taste an amazing number of South African wines. Be sure to join us for episode three of our epic journey to Africa.